scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You cannot imagine how happy I am truly to be here tonight, not just because God has granted me the privilege to bless his people, but it is so wonderful to preach in a house that is led by servants of God who love you sincerely. God bless you. Let's honor Reverend Sam and his dear wife. Thank you, sir. Thank you sincerely. Hallelujah. I count it a great honor and privilege to be here. The more I pursue after the things of God, the more I see how much of an honor and a privilege it is to be trusted with the responsibility of helping God's people know God. So it is not, it's not a thing of pride at all. Every opportunity we have, it is it's an opportunity that for me is and will be much cherished, including that which I've been given tonight. So thank you so much, Reverend Sam, and your dear wife. And thank you to the leadership and all the people very excellent very gracious the lord bless you in jesus name can we lift our hands to jesus and just ask him for an encounter tonight worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. That was It is because of who you are that we are gathered here tonight. It is because of what you can do in and through men that we're here to celebrate the investment of your hand upon your servant. Lord, we thank you for the honor and the privilege you have accorded us. We cry unto you tonight that you will speak and cause our hearts and our ears to hear. In the name of Jesus, let tonight be an encounter indeed. I pray that you will shift us to realms unimagined, even by the Spirit of the living God. We vow that Jesus and him alone be revealed and glorified in this place. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. I want to take a minute to just reciprocate the honor that Reverend Sam, you know, so lavishly expressed while he, uh, he was here just introducing me. Reverend Sam, thank you so much for leading the so many that you have led especially in the place of prayer thank you sincerely most people do not know the kind of stamina it takes to do what he's doing to wake up in the morning alone um, especially for a sadly lazy generation it takes a lot of stamina and diligence beyond spirituality it takes discipline to be up and doing vibrant the morning prayers among the many things that they achieve you get 
to reveal your true spiritual state because if you are not healthy it becomes obvious you can hide under the guise of preaching but you cannot hide with morning prayers and so if the word is not working in your life eventually it will become clear and I join the so many who appreciate what you are doing truly to salute and to honor you and your dear wife let's give him a big God bless you is this how you honor your pastor thank you hallelujah it is when we get to heaven we will find out how many got saved healed delivered transformed through one man's obedience obedience is powerful God bless you again sir thank you please be seated I want to charge our hearts tonight on a subject that is very personal to me because it it's an attempt teaching what I'm teaching tonight is like telling the story of my life teaching what I want to teach you tonight is like telling you the story of any and every man who has truly been lifted by God and for me um, as I look through my notes while we were coming it occurred to me again how faithful and how good God has been to me and to everyone who cares to be discerning and thoughtful enough and so I want you to please pay attention as we discuss wherever we stop tonight to God be the glory hallelujah I'm teaching on a subject that I title lifted by grace please I want you to pay attention lifted by grace <laughs> second Corinthians chapter 12 please we'll read from verse 8 and 9 second Corinthians 12 8 and 9 concerning this thing I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me the thorn in Paul's flesh and his response God's response was very interesting and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you I want us to stop there my grace is sufficient for you a man comes to God and cries concerning his inabilities concerning his vulnerabilities concerning his inadequacies and God's answer to such a man is my grace is sufficient for you help us in the name of Jesus Christ in 2nd Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 let's read down to 4 2nd Peter chapter 1 2 to 4 the Bible says grace and peace is multiplied to you in the knowledge be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ we're reading to verse 4 it says as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue it says okay well you're reading new King James if we can have King James that's fine it says whereby we've been given unto us exceeding great and precious promises it says that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss at the back of every extraordinary life in the kingdom at the back of every extraordinary um, achievement for want of word is the grace of God like pastor rightly said in this kingdom we are made by grace we are lifted by grace and it is important that we understand the grace of God alongside the dynamics of the supply of that grace hallelujah for everyone you have celebrated for everyone you have admired for everyone in the kingdom whose life has inspired you to any degree I am telling you categorically that behind such phenomenal strides is the grace of God and it's important for us to come to terms with that because trying 
to achieve results that only come by grace without grace will frustrate you results in this kingdom are purely a function of grace hallelujah this is very very important in second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5 I love what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. Please give it to us. The Bible says, not that we are sufficient. Is that in your Bible? Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. It says, but our sufficiency is of God. Verse 6. It says, who hath made us able. The word able there means qualified. The word able there is the same word sufficient. That means the capacity to rise to the occasion. Our supposed qualification, our sense of merit is derived from this grace that has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter but of the spirit. The Bible says for the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. What then is grace? As as popular as this word sounds across the body of Christ, you will be amazed to understand that very, very few people, respectfully speaking, have the slightest idea about the concept of grace nor the administration, God's system for administering grace. So we talk about grace all the time across the body of Christ, but very few people really understand the concept nor the system of its administration. This is the reason why, in spite of the fact that we talk a lot about grace, the results do not show that there is a supply of grace in our lives. Are we together? What then is grace? Years ago when I took time to study this subject, I was surprised how difficult it was to define grace. It sounds very easy, but when you dig deep with thoughtfulness, if you really understand what you are saying, you should be at a loss as to being able to capture in English the kind of definition that would best express the concept of grace. And so in the place of prayer, I found a definition that I felt would bless me and that people would be able to relate to. And I found that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Let's read together if you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Say blessed. blessed. Say spiritual blessings. Spiritual. One more time. Say blessed. blessed. Say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual. This for me is the most concise capture of the word grace. Because any other attempt to define grace will only mean that you will have to compartmentalize grace. And while it is true that grace is manifold and multidimensional, the Bible here says God hath blessed us. And he says he blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So my definition of grace is all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings that have been given to the believer to produce a life of victory but it is accessed only through the office and the person of the Christ all spiritual blessings made available to the believer for a victorious life but then it is accessed only through the office of the Christ. This is my definition of grace. So grace is not just limited to sufficiency. It is not just limited to favor. It is not just limited to access. It is all encompassing. That means every spiritual blessing. Please look up. 
every advantage that has been provided for for the believer that can become an instrument of victory in your life is called grace every that means power is grace wisdom is grace faith is grace provided it sustains the ability to translate to your victory and it is only routed through the office of the Christ it is called grace if you do not have to consult the office of the Christ to access it it is not grace for it to be called grace the office of the Christ must become the principal center point of administration that means if you route that ability through another medium other than the Christ it may be ability but it is not called grace it matters that it passes through the office of the Christ to be called grace are we together now so if I see you displaying a semblance of wisdom before we call that wisdom grace we will have to vet whether that wisdom passed through the office of the Christ and there is one litmus test if it passes through the office of the Christ then you are saddled with the responsibility of using it for your profiting but to reveal Christ so if we do not find the revelation of Christ captured in your display of spiritual abilities we have a right to vet the source it is not grace are we together now it's important for us to have this frame of thinking. Again, let me repeat that when it is the grace of God, it generically refers to every spiritual blessing made available to the believer but routed through the person and the office of the Christ. Hallelujah. So if you go to a herbalist and you access power, that is not called grace because the Christ factor is ignored in that process. Are we together? In fact, if your sufficiency comes from yourself, it does not matter the result it produces. It is not called grace. The moment Christ has to be isolated from that process, it no longer is called grace. Are we together? It is not the workability of the ability that makes it grace. It is the, the Christocentric character. The fact that Christ is not alienated from that process. That is what makes it grace. Are we together now? This is very, very important. Because there are many believers who deal with the subject of grace in isolation to the person and the office of the Christ. So we see grace like an anointing that is independent of Christ. I can access it. It doesn't matter whether I have a relationship with God or not. If the anointing is in a bottle of oil, whether Christ is represented or not, once I can pour it on my head and it commands some possibilities in my life, they say, I am walking in grace. No. No. If Christ is not captured in that process, and if it does not lead to the ultimate revelation of the Christ, it is not grace. Are we together? This is very important. For tonight, you know by now, like I heard your pastor say, that grace in its operation is manifold. Manifold means multifaceted, multidimensional. But for tonight, I want to deal with two dimensions of grace for our discussion tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God will open our eyes to see. In the name of Jesus. I think I have said it in this church that in fact there is an anointing that we call an engracing of God that has the responsibility to cause the eyes of men to see. When it has to do with the exegesis of scripture, you will need more than intellect to understand spiritual things. The Bible says the words of the vision has become like the pages of a book that is sealed. And they gave to one who is learned and said, take, read. And he said, I cannot because it is sealed. And they gave to one who is unlearned. And he said, I cannot because I'm not even learned. So both the learned and the unlearned, when they come to the presence of God, you see, the book can be opened, but it is still sealed. It is unlocked. It takes the spirit of God to open it. Are we together now? 
And so Paul was speaking in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. He talked about this grace that can make all men see. To make all men see. All men, educated or uneducated, young or old when you are under the atmosphere of that grace it is able to manipulate your understanding until you comprehend what the spirit is saying no matter how difficult no matter the intellectual component behind it he is able to speak through the speaker and cause you to understand the first dimension of grace that we see from scripture and represents our interest tonight is what we call saving grace please write saving grace titus chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible calls it the grace that bringeth salvation titus 2 1 did i get that right please help me find that scripture for me the grace that bringeth is it 11 2 11 please my apologies 2 11 Titus 2 11 thank you it says for the grace of God that bringeth salvation so there is a grace that brings salvation and the Bible says because it is responsible for salvation it appears to all men it didn't say it appears to interested men because of God's determination to see that all men be saved he has so lavishly made this grace available and with it the capacity to be saved so that no one is with an excuse are we together so there is saving grace now please look up then the character and the operation of this dimension of grace is that you do not have the power watch this now that, that that grace is captured in a message. The Bible calls it the report. Who shall believe our report? He said, who shall believe this report? There is a report that you believe. The substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And if you believe that report, are we together? The Bible says, by confessing the Lordship of Jesus according to Romans chapter 10, from verse 8 to 10 that if you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 and you confess with your mouth you shall be saved for with the heart man believes the Bible says and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so the administration of that grace is that you do not do anything your assignment is to believe are we together now to believe with your heart and then verbalize that belief through your confession and that the moment you subscribe to this pattern that grace comes administering the life of god to you are we together now yes so it is safe to say that grace demands no effort as it were on your own part everything was done by Jesus Christ on the cross. Your assignment is to believe that report and to receive Jesus by faith in your heart, confessing him with your mouth. And the whole software, if I would use that word, is implanted in your spirit with no effort whatsoever on your own part. This is the grace that appears unto all. And if you are saved here, and you can verify whether you are saved by finding out if you subscribe to this pattern. If you did not believe Jesus with your heart and confessed him with your mouth, you are not saved. Even if you confess with your mouth and you did not believe in your heart, you are still not saved. The law of administering salvation demands that you must believe with your heart and then to confess with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. The second dimension of grace that we'll consider tonight is called enabling grace. Please write it down. Enabling grace. Enabling grace. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I'm taking time to just build this so that um, our understanding can be at the same page so that once we begin to discuss a few things, all of us will be carried along. Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things. How many things? All. 
look at this statement very carefully and tell me if that does not sound like pride. How can a man stand out of the blues and say, I can do all things. Let your mind go wild. You know what all things, positively I mean. All things. Hmm. You know how many things are difficult in this life, in this world? You try healing the sick. You try raising the dead. You try building a house in three months. You try securing favor from systems and structures that are antichrist. And here a man stands and does not care what your, how far your imagination takes you. He dares to tell you, I can do. <laughs> Please pay attention. My teaching begins now. I can do all things. What statement of pride. I can do all things. And yet, you are not omniscient. You are not omnipotent. Are we together now? You are not omnipresent. That means you do not know the future. This was a man who was the arch enemy of everyone who was antichrist. If they saw Paul, remember once upon a time, a people came together and vowed not to eat till Paul died. I don't know what they did later on. Because Paul lived a long time and yet a man stands in the midst of turbulence antagonism and says I can do all things if you make such a statement in our world today your first enemies will be your audience there did you say all things let me give me all the qualifications so that I can use to vet your seriousness did you school in Yale or Harvard number one are you connected to the presidents of nations? And then you say, it does not matter. I can do all things. Look at this statement very carefully because this is going to be the basis of my challenging you tonight. How can a man stand and say, I can do all things? How many things can you do? No, 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 no. Before my teaching, how many things can you do? <laughs> I can do all things. Imagine what will happen to you if you believed this. I can do all things. He's not talking of all negative things. He's not talking of the concept of all things. Is all things that are in line with my purpose. All things that are in line as far as God's expectation for me is concerned. You get the idea now? I can do all things. That means you have taken away that limitation from your life. That in your mind and in your life, the only limitation to your advancement is the voice of God and process. But as far as mountains are concerned, you have sustained through this spiritual intelligence the ability to not even recognize their presence. I can do all things. Imagine that someone begins to make that statement as a tenant. I can do all things. As a man of God, you've not even started ministry. I can do all things. And you look at the map of the world. You are holding it in your hands. And you look at, you don't even have an international passport. And you can dare say, I can do all things. I can do all things. But he does not stop there. The next statement turns what would have been a statement of pride and arrogance into a message for anybody who intends to go far. He says, I can do all things through Christ. Sali Pakatosia. Which, not who informs, not just who guides, who strengtheneth me, is the Greek word energes, a strengthening. It says, finally, brethren, Ephesians 6 and verse 10, be strong in the Lord, it says, and in the power of his might. In fact, the amplified rendition, please give it to us, Ephesians 6 and verse 10, it says, draw your power through your union with him. Finally, brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Can we have the amplified of this? Is God speaking to someone already? He says, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. 
I'm using the energy, but it does not come from me. He says, I can do all things. You need to get a powerful revelation tonight. I can do all things. So when you watch a clock moving around non-stop, you would think it's because the mechanical system is so powerful. But behind that beauty, there are usually two or three or four batteries. Is that true? The power that drives that clock is not just in the mechanical system, but that there is a battery. Even if the clock is new, without that battery, it does not move. So he's saying here that I can, when you see the results, you are only seeing the hand of the clock go around and it does not seem to stop. By what energy do you keep going around? He says, I can do all things. Then he says, let me confess, through Christ. Through Christ that strengtheneth me. Through Christ that strengtheneth me. Please sit down. The enabling grace. The enabling grace. We read earlier in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. He says our sufficiency. You know what sufficiency is? Please look at me. Sufficiency means the condition of being adequate. The condition of being adequate. The capacity to rise to the challenge. Paul is saying when you look at me and you look at my history, it is not fair to be commanding the results that I am getting here. He's saying my sufficiency, the capacity, the ability to be adequate. I always seem to match the occasion. He's saying our sufficiency is not of ourselves. In fact, when Jesus, the word incarnate, walked upon the earth, he was not ashamed to say, I can, ah. He says, I can of my own self do nothing. How will Jesus make such a statement of weakness? The word. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. He says, our sufficiency is of God who has made us abled ministers of the New Testament that is not after the letter for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life. Is God speaking to someone now? So we're discussing enabling grace and the dynamics of this dimension of grace which is the dimension that is missing in the life of many believers. Most of us have accessed the saving grace because we have acknowledged Jesus as Lord and Savior, but we have not been able to access this enabling grace to tap into the technology that supplies strength, energy, capacity, the grace to move forward. Let me tell you this. This is what has distinguished men into cadres of possibilities in the body of Christ. The ability to access this enabling grace so two or three people can be saved genuinely so and yet the possibilities the results that they command differ it is not necessarily a product of the will of God it is not necessarily a product of one situation being greater than another for one he has found he is tapped into a fountain of endless supply the grace that energizes the grace that enables always rising up to the challenge the quality of being sufficient adequate so when a project comes for instance and you need two billion naira you will see the person standing you size him and there is nothing there except that he will invite you for the dedication and you are looking with all kinds of suspicion something is not fair in this equation you are right but it is called grace. The person comes late for work and that lateness is what makes him to meet his destiny helper the next time. How unfair can that be? He came late and while they were about to punish him, here comes his destiny helper and says, I know you somewhere. He says, oh, I'm, I'm about to be queried. And he says, no problem. Let's discuss this issue first. I hear you are in this and that opens another door. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you, your life, um, your life will be a mystery first to you 
and then to many people around you. Believe me, I know what I am saying. Are we together? The quality of being adequate, the capacity to rise up to the challenge, the grace of God. Someone is receiving that dimension of grace. Now watch this. The grace that brings salvation, what you call, watch this now please, the saving grace. The saving grace does not grow. It is fixed. It only comes by believing and confessing and that is the jurisdiction of that grace. Are we together? The second dimension of grace takes more than believing and confessing. This is where I want, I want to please understand. Are you getting the difference now? When it has to do with accessing the saving grace, all you need to do is to believe in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, Jesus as Savior, Jesus as Lord, and Jesus as King. And then you confess with your mouth, and that grace is administered to you alongside the life of God that comes with it. But when it has to do with the enabling grace, that is the grace that empowers you for a life of exploits and victory, it will take more than just believing. Please watch this. The enabling grace comes and grows through revelation knowledge. Write it down, please. The enabling grace comes and grows through revelation knowledge. As simple as this statement is, it may be the key that explains the frustration and the stagnation of many believers. The enabling grace comes and grows through revelation knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, we read that earlier, let's read it again. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means this grace comes and is even multiplied through knowledge, not through desire. I want to be great. Uh -uh, it doesn't work that way. I desire to be great, helpful enough to motivate you, but that will not bring you there. Proverbs 18 and verse 1 says, Through desire a man, having separated himself, he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. This dimension of grace demands a requisite level of revelation knowledge. Is someone following now? This is very important. Now, it says, let's go back to um, uh, Second Peter now. Second Peter 1 from verse 2. Now we're looking at 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given us all things. How many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Again, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. Pay attention to verse 4, please. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious. What were we given? We were given promises, not just realities. Do you know what a promise is? A promise is a, is a commitment that is activated by fulfilling conditions. Look at what the Bible says we were given. We were given exceeding great and precious promises. Let me give you an example of such promises. That it shall come to pass, Deuteronomy 28, 1. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all his commands that I command you this day, it says that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth, not some, all the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you exceeding great and precious promises that no weapon that is fashioned against you will prosper and that every tongue that rises up against you will fall in judgment exceeding great and precious promises that the path of the just is as a shining light shining ever brighter even unto the perfect day is someone listening now that when men say there is a casting down, regardless the situation for you, it will be that there is a lifting up. I'm telling you what you were given, that you were given exceeding great and precious promises. It is only when those promises are activated in your life 
they prove that in reality you are a partaker of that divine nature. If we don't see these promises working in your life, you will not look like a child of God. That is what he's saying. It is in the presence of these realities activated that you validate the reality of your divine nature. So if I look at your life as an attestation to the fact that the divine life is working in you, I begin to search for a manifestation of these great and exceeding precious promises. I search for favor. I search for speed. Are we together now? Don't tell me it's because I'm in Abuja. No. We were given these great and exceeding precious promises. Is someone understanding now? You need to know what God gave you. This is what we were given. I like the word promises. Promises. I give you a millionaire check. Promises. You have a responsibility to transact with that promise until it becomes cash. Are you, are you learning now? You can keep a check of 100 million naira or 100 million dollars and be dying of hunger. It does not stop me from being a giver. I gave you. You cannot blame me for that situation. As far as my giving is concerned, the check is proof, but it is a promise. A promise demands that there are conditions to activate it. Please listen. Believers hear me. Great people hear me. Having dreams and visions of you having a great life does not automatically translate to a life of victory. You were given great, exceeding great and precious promises. Apostle, you don't know my background. The gift still is unto you. He said, for the promise is unto you and unto your children. Is that in your Bible? Your children's children, as many as are afar off, even as many as the Lord will call. Please listen very carefully. Exceeding great and precious promises. We have been celebrating the promises forever. And yet we have not been able to understand the spiritual technology of transacting these promises to now appear in our lives. The Bible says the word became flesh. The word became there is, is, is like corn becoming corn flour or lemon becoming lemonade. Something happened. You did not just plug lemon on a tree and then it just squeezed out lemonade. No. Become. Is someone learning now? No matter what you go through, even if you live a defeated life, it does not change the scripture that you have been given exceeding great and precious promises. It is true today over the most anointed person and it is true today over the worst sinner if there is any uh, expression like that. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. He has given us exceeding great and precious promises. And the Bible says that by these, by the manifestation of these promises in our lives, how do you say that God is with a man? Ask Nicodemus. He came to Jesus by night, John chapter 3, and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except there are some things that show that God is with you. Take it higher for me, please. If you do not carry certain results, we have a right to vet the reality. Don't say it does not matter. The Bible says that by these, ye might be partakers. That means something about your results should be a Bible study manual. That something about the workings of the spirit in your life should compel someone who would ordinarily not pay attention to God and say, what is this that God is doing with a man? We are not talking of pride. We are not talking of competition. The effulgence of the glory of God through the life of man. He said, oh, that men would praise the Lord, Reverend Sam. He said, for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. A 
exceeding great promises. This is beyond just prospering financially. Dimensions of the anointing. The grace that can keep nations to their knees for Jesus. So do not ask how your pastor right from a studio would be able to minister to people and the Bible says by these promises before Reverend Sam started that promise was there it took a consciousness to say I need to activate something ah. only God knows what else is there and while your lifetime is reading like a meter heaven is saying why, why are you short circuiting the many things that you need to do This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life. Hear me. You want to activate the operation of enabling grace? Your first assignment is to know the promises. Forget about how to activate them. You need to know what is there first. Ali Baratos Kiata. And now, brethren, Acts 20 32. I commend you to God, then to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up. And when you are now built up capacity, it gives you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. That means among those who are sanctified, not everybody will walk in that inheritance. Is someone learning? These are the things I read. And I read them from one room. I believe them. I believe them. That when God said you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth, I believed him. I did not know that knowledge was transiting me to a dimension where I was activating the supply. You see, one day God opened my eyes. I think I may have shared it or you may have heard it in my teachings. Reverend Sam, I had a vision and I saw a giant gate and I saw doors. You know how post office boxes are? It was opening and closing. And on every door, there were scriptures written. And the moment the small door opens, light will come from it. And I was wondering, and the Spirit of the Lord began to tell me that every dimension, every truth of the Bible has a grace component that comes upon you to defend that scripture with your life. Are we together now? When you truly catch the revelation, the light there, that means the grace component will come upon you. That means everything you claim to know and you do not have the grace to defend its validity with your life has not become a revelation to you. This is powerful. So when I learn that I'm not in a hurry to say I know, I use the appearance of the grace component of that revelation to validate that it has come. There are many things we claim to know in the body of Christ. But when we search for the energizing that empowers you to defend that revelation, it is not there. So we call God names that have no proof in our life. Oh, you are Jaira. Where is the supply? Every time you call God before the nations, you attract their attention to you. Make sure you do not misrepresent him with your results. So before you shout Jara to the nations, call him in your room. Verify that you know what happened in the burning bush. That's why God told Moses, I'm not going to allow you embarrass and disgrace me. Let's do this at the, at the burning bush. A sample of the miracles you are going to be showing Pharaoh. Throw the rod. Pick it by the tail. And he said, now you can go. When he stood before Pharaoh, he was not trying. He came with grace backing him. Listen, you cannot call the world to come and celebrate Jesus in your life 
while you are still trying to understand the ropes around this thing while growth remains ever increasing mastery is a reality in this kingdom he said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully is someone learning so he has given us exceeding my apologies for leaving this on the screen but this is powerful i want you to see it exceeding great and precious promises did you know reverend sam many of the miracles we think god uniquely brought to others was already there for everyone there are few miracles we celebrate in the lives of people that was uniquely channeled to them these are possibilities that are left in the spirit if someone buys a land today and builds an estate, it will look as though the federal government kept the land for him. No, it's been there. It's the one who saw it and paid for it and built on it that becomes the owner. Are we together? Yes. I believe what I'm telling you with all my heart. Exceeding great and precious promises. So your first assignment, please sit down, please sit down. Your first assignment now, remember what we are dealing with, lifted by grace. You want to understand the dynamics of the supply of grace, that when it has to do with the enabling grace, it is revelation dependent, not desire dependent. Many believers keep wishing in their desire or keep complaining in their absence of results. Why are things like this in my life? That is not the seed for the abundance of grace. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Not your knowledge, the knowledge. It's your assignment to find out what knowledge controls prosperity. What knowledge controls lifting. The grace for prosperity does not come until the knowledge for prosperity comes. The grace for influence never comes until the knowledge for influence comes. I want everybody to hear my voice. So how are you going to go about it? I will tell them to hear me. No. Hear ye him is a grace that is supported by a kind of knowledge. Knowledge number one. If I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men. Do you know that? Otherwise it becomes a risk for God to draw men. You need to know the kind of man God draws to you first. Find out the kind of man God drew to David. There were men who were in debt. There were men who were distressed. Wicked people all together. Are you ready for that kind of attraction? When you do not know what to do with them? No. The mighty men you are calling do not come as mighty men. They come as weak men. Then the knowledge you have now turns them to mighty men. I was very touched hearing the story, I believe that is a lady in the church, hearing there's nothing more powerful. It's called the transforming church. You know what that means? That means you come as you are, but it is against the mandate to stay as you are. That means, listen, the body of knowledge God has given his servant has a grace for transformation, but that grace is not it does not come until you submerge yourself. There is a body of truth, doctrinally speaking. If you do not know, you will not carry the grace. Listen, look at the ratio of impartation to teaching. Three years to one night. Please sit down. Look at the ministry of Jesus. The ratio of impartation to teaching. For one encounter on the day of Pentecost, it took three years plus 40 extra days. When he resurrected, he did not even have time to celebrate it. Return from heaven and say, gentlemen, go back, let's discuss. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming. There are still some things I've not taught you. And the Bible says he spent 40 days teaching them the matters of the kingdom. As powerful as impartation is, the value of impartation is when it comes upon a vessel that has knowledge. The potential of impartation 
is released. That is why impartation in ignorance can easily delve into witchcraft and extra biblical practices because there is no knowledge to define the coordinates of the administration of the anointing. Is someone learning tonight? Knowledge. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God. Jesus is called the wisdom of God. Jesus is called the word of God. All these activities I mentioned were richly captured in his life, yet he refused to be named after them. He could name his house the house of prayer, but he named himself the word. The compendium, the logos of God. Are we together now? The Bible says, has thou not heard, has thou not known? The everlasting God, the Lord, he says he does, he does not, um, he is not weary. The, and then he says, there is no searching of his understanding. It is that understanding that grants him the capacity to not be weak. When you say God is not weak, it's because there is a vast body of knowledge that forbids him from limitation. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. So here's how it works. Your first assignment in activating the supply of the enabling grace is to understand methodically these exceeding great and precious promises. My question for you is, do you know them? Because you see, you are not saved by works, but you are saved unto good works. Are we together now? The purpose of the investment of God's grace upon your life is that you would produce results according to John 15 and verse 8. He says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide or remain. Most believers have celebrated ignorance or have random their approach to acquiring spiritual knowledge. Please look up. Their approach to acquiring spiritual knowledge is rather random, sir. If they stumble across a message that profits them, fine and good. If they so happen to meander around a conference, fine and good. There is no staying methodically to be taught line upon line, precepts upon precepts. The absence of methodical mentorship is why there are gaps in the spiritual understanding of many believers. Hence, the absence of grace. So people know something small about favor. They know something small about speed. They know something small about help. They know something small about prayer. They know something small about fasting. And all of those knowledge, they, they are important, but they are insufficient to produce anything potent spiritually. Grace and peace. Have I lost you tonight? Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge according as his divine power the bible says hath given us all things right but it says through knowledge through knowledge through knowledge psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of cause verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you how many of you all of you are children of the Most High. Remember, Jesus made reference to this scripture. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men. So, the absence of spiritual knowledge, exact knowledge, reduces a man with godlike capacity to become a mere man. The Bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child that he differed not from a slave. What does that mean? The experience of that one even though a legitimate beneficiary of the inheritance will not be different from a slave. Is someone learning? So the Bible is very very clear as to the fact that God made a commitment that is connected to conditions so the first assignment is to know those promises 
what has God said concerning me? The Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. My sister, listen to me. My brother, listen to me. It does not matter what your background is. Whilst it is profitable to be inspired with those you think have gone, that God seems to help, let me bring you good news that the same Lord is rich unto all. In as much as there are disparities as far as the election of grace is concerned, everybody in Christ, Bishop Oyedeko will say, has a high calling. There are no low callings in Christ. By reason of the election of grace, we may have certain duties, certain offices that may seem to look higher than others. But let me tell you the truth. Everybody can make maximum kingdom impact with their lives. If only you know how to tap into the supply of this mysterious supply of the spirit. All blessings that we call grace. A gentleman was about to start ministry and he sent me a text. I believe he was sincere. And he sent me a text and demanded an amount as what he felt would be support. I, I don't even know the person. And I don't want to tell you how much. Um, it's, it's a very disturbing amount. Hundreds of millions. And he said he doesn't know, you know, if this can happen. <laughs> and I said... This man, already, that is an exam he wrote and failed by himself. By that email, it is, it is proof that he should not even go near the corridors of ministry. He should quickly go and find someone who will help him. If it's this kind of understanding, you want to be a shepherd, you will kill your members from day one. The worst, the, the most hit one will be the first member who comes. Are we together? Now, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying, look at the kind of understanding. And this guy is, expects the, the grace. You see that it is unfair to want a certain level of grace without the requisite level of understanding. Hallelujah. The enabling grace so what is the key to accessing this grace the key is to access high level spiritual illumination backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit please listen I'm giving you a very powerful key now the key that releases an individual into abundance of grace if you want to call it great grace if you want to call it ever increasing grace if you want to call it is high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 high level spiritual illumination that is backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the spirit it says the eyes of your understanding please give us amplify the eyes of your understanding it says being flooded with light flooded with light how many of you have gone into a stadium in the night have you gone for a crusade or any activity in the stadium if you were blindfolded and they opened your eye in the night and you didn't have the chance to look up you would never even know that it was night because of the high level. They are called flood lights. It is night right now. And if we cover all the windows and just leave you, maybe we cover all the windows, anything that can leave you outside. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. 
And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.